All right. Welcome to this week's episode of Javelin Journeys. And um, thanks very much for joining us again. Um, and this week, I wanted to get into the hot topic of ChatGPT and generative AI in posting social media content. Uh, it's something I get asked about a lot. And obviously, doing what I do, I'm quite a big advocate of um, ChatGPT and, and its capabilities and its powers. One of my clients asked me recently um, around the subject of um, their staff using, their employees and their colleagues um, using um, generative AI to create their posts. And the problem they came to me with is um, whilst they as a business really believe in the power of social media and content, their team struggle with the time to be able to create those posts. Um, what I suspect is that there's a little bit of human nature in there, which is laziness. And that's not, you know, that we've all got that edge. We always take the path of least resistance. But what's happened is um, one of their teams gotten some results using using AI to generate a post. And now the, the knee-jerk reaction is let's everybody pile on this so we can, you know, create that beast one that Paul's always talking about and, and get out there and deliver some real results. I've got a big word of caution about using that in that way. Because the temptation is, it's it's kind of like what I see a lot of people doing with um, cold email outreach, right? Is you're trying to reach a broad swathe of people, you're trying to do it at scale and pace. And what happens is that relevance and the personalization gets lost in the process. And it just becomes a bland copy and paste message. Even if you're sat looking for 100 leads per day and writing them a custom personalized email, it never ends up that way. You lose attention, you get bored, and you end up copying and pasting roughly the same message to everybody. I avoid, I, I would personally rather send a, a really niche lead profile. So say chief operating officer in a specific industry, I know they have these problems and I will send those guys a specific email rather than say, I'm going to go and find all these people and write them all a personalized email because it never works out. And the same is true with your content, right? Because if you try and create your content at pace using generative AI, what you end up going to do is you're going to rely on that generative AI and that's going to be, you'll put a topic into it, create a post and you'll post that on LinkedIn. That's not going to add real value for you. So my word of caution is that whilst generative AI, large language models, whatever you want to call them, whatever the buzzword is that you're going to give them, GPT, whilst it's great at some things, it's really terrible at others. Um, and people can see when you've written a post that is purely chat GPT or similar, because it'll use words that you'd never use. And anybody who's in your network who you've already built trust with, who you've already gotten to a level where they might be a referrer or a stakeholder for your business, they're going to read that post and they're going to know that that wasn't you who wrote it. And the moment they realize that, you switch off. So that's really important to be aware of that. Um, you as a new user to something like that might not be able to see um, the patterns in the text, the way it formats things, the sorts of things it does when you don't give it a really specific prompt. And it can get to a point where to get the output prompt without you writing the post in the first place takes such a long time that it actually would have been easier for you to just write the prompt in the first, uh, just write the post in the first place. That's the irony, right? If you want to get a really good result, that's the only way to really do it. So the way that I would recommend that folks out there use this sort of technology is twofold. Like, first of all, it's about generating the ideas for you to write posts about. Now, there's a newsletter coming out um, this this week, gives you some ideas, um, you know, the content classroom newsletter gives you some ideas on the layout of your post, what sorts of things you should be including, how you should consider what you're writing and creating that narrative with your posts. So you're not just writing a bunch of ideas out, but you're writing your bunch of ideas in a way that people will care. That's important, right? So I would say, get on that content classroom newsletter, have a read of it each week, we'll drop it in your inbox. And um, it's purely about 
helping people create better content, right? It's not a sales pitch. It is helping you create better content. Um, so ideating with ChatGPT is great. It's brilliant as a brainstorming partner. It's brilliant for creating topics. It's great for, you know, if you've got content like this, where it's, uh, you know, 15, 20 minutes of you or one of your business leaders talking about um, a topic or a series of topics, then it's great breaking those topics down and giving you those ideas that you can write a post about. You still got to write the post. Now, one thing that I do do, do do, which helps a lot of people in terms of their, um, in the way that they create more content from limited amount of input from themselves, right? So the way I look at things is, um, if I'm gonna sit and write a 20 minute post, that's a lot of my time to write one post. But if I could write four posts in 20 minutes or six posts in 20 minutes, that would be much better. Now, the way you can use ChatGPT is to create a bunch of prompts that will output a given post in multiple tones of voice and multiple styles. And it usually works well for business profiles, better than personal profiles. If you're trying to get it to write stuff for a personal profile, it can be really hard to get that tone of voice right um, for that person or for yourself. But for a business account, well, you've probably already got brand guidelines, a tone of voice, and it is a little bit less personable. People expect when you're putting out a personal post to be adding your experience, your projects, your past experience, your knowledge, your thoughts, your chat GPT can't do all that. What it can do is take what you give it and put a different spin on it. So sometimes what I will do is I'll create a post around a video where it's me talking like this on a specific point. And then I'll get it to create a version of that that I post without the video. So it becomes a text post. Now that is achievable, right? And in all it requires is a couple more minutes of me going back over the top again and looking for words that I wouldn't say or phrases that I wouldn't say or layout that I don't like and correcting it. There's no harm in doing that. And that will go down as well as your original content, or if not better. Um, sometimes I'll look at some of the stuff that ChatGPT gives me in terms of tone of voice, and I'll be really pleasantly surprised. But like, wow, I would never have thought of writing it that way. I love that analogy. It's great for quotes. It's great for um, giving you subheadings and titles and all those sorts of things. What it's really bad at is creating original content. Um, of that style where it needs to be personable, emotion-driven to get people bought in. If you're not creating emotional connections in your post, you're not going to get results that you want to get at the end of things. Posting for posting's sake, as has been said lots and lots and lots, is pointless. You're far better to do three posts a week that are direct for your audience, that are personable, that are connected, um, with the way you want to speak to your ideal client. And that's the other thing to remember is don't be posting for your audience that you have now. Post for the audience that you want to have. If you're not getting inbound leads from your audience, people aren't converting, there's two things at play. One is the content that you're producing isn't speaking to them strongly enough. And two, you're speaking to the wrong people probably. Because the people you've built up in your professional network over the years that you've been going... Um, the people that you've um, known, worked with, um, clients that you've had in previous roles, they're all there in that, in that audience, but they're potentially they're not the people that you need to be speaking to. So don't get caught into the trap of sending them um, a, a message through your content when they're never going to buy, even if they like what you're doing. So the vanity metrics then become quite dangerous because you might be doing quite well in your in your vanity metrics, your views, your comments, your likes, but actually it's not getting to the people that are going to buy your product or services in the long run. So consider that your ideal client needs to be front and centre. Um, it might be that you go through a bit of a drought period with your metrics as a result. If you start posting for people who aren't yet in your audience, then the likelihood is your views and, and comments and likes and engagements are going to go down for a period of time. And that can feel like forever. Trust me, I've been there. Um, I went from retail 
to contact centers, to content marketing. Those are three very different um, industries to speak to. And I've got a mix, an eclectic mix of all those people in my network. Some of them are useful for that, some of them aren't. I don't speak to everyone in my network in terms of my content. I speak to the people that I want to drive value for. So right now, you know, I'm talking to people who want to create content but don't have the time to create their own, don't know how to create their own, haven't got money to pay someone to create their own. They're all the people I want to talk to, and that's what I create content for. I could talk about leadership. I could talk about fraud prevention. I could talk about customer experience, customer service, analytics, data, all those things. I've got great experience in all of those, but they're irrelevant for who I want to reach right now. They're areas that I can talk to, but they're not going to convert my audience. My audience wants to know how to do a specific set of things, which is create a brand authority and turn their audience into customers. So anyway, I've diverged a little bit here from the original topic, but to go back to things is your generative AI is there to support what you're doing, but fundamentally there's a real danger there. If you're a business owner listening to this and your teams are considering using generative AI to create their posts, it's obvious is what I'm gonna say when that's the main part of the process. There has to be human element in there, substantial human element in there, and an investment of time. That investment of time is the hardest part to carve out because they've got a million and one other things to be doing. And I totally get that. And that's why I'm such a big advocate for the video-based interviews that I use all the time because that's how I can create, you know, in 30 minutes of my time, or your time, or 15 minutes, or an hour, however long you've got. And it's content that's probably already there somewhere. You've probably been on a webinar. You've probably got a podcast. You've probably um, done some um, talks for for clients or or whatever behind the scenes. It's probably already there to a certain extent. 30 minutes of your time on average a week, a fortnight, a month, doesn't matter. That can be turned into so many different forms of content from audiograms and visualizers to quartz images to short 30 second reels um, in landscape, in square, in portrait format. And newsflash, technology makes that relatively simple to do. A bit of an investment of time up front. Again, it's that investment in time. Not everybody has it. Not everybody wants to make time for it. And we struggle to prioritize it. But if you've done that groundwork, all of a sudden your team has two or 300 digital assets that they can post out across all of their social media channels without too much repetition of each other. And your clients or your potential clients will never notice that. They, even if they do repeat each other, it's probably going to be in a different format. They won't put two and two together and realize because there's so much of a diverse mix. Like if I put the same content out on Facebook as LinkedIn, nobody notices because it's a different audience entirely. It's a different bunch of people that I'm reaching on there. If I put it out on Twitter, it's a different bunch of people again. If I put it out on Instagram, again, different. So just be conscious of that and maximize the outputs that you've got. So create, repurpose your content as much as you can. Create blogs from it, create, you know, and that can be a good mix for your teams to think about as well is if you've already done a post yourself, your teams can take that and use that as inspiration for their own posts for the week. You know, have a theme each week that you want to post around. Um, tag your team on LinkedIn and make them, make it part of their job role. Make it part of their role. Make them, you know, contract them to it if you need to. Some people feel really uncomfortable about it until they get posting and then actually really start to enjoy it. And I've seen some really good um, examples where people have said, oh, I'm not comfortable with that. I don't want to post on LinkedIn or Facebook or wherever. And actually, once they've started doing it, they've kind of, you've kind of had to force them into it a bit to start with. But you know what? They become really good at it and they enjoy it and they get a good response and they get involved in it. And then, and then don't get me wrong, there's other people you should never force into doing it because it's just not their style. But what I often find is it's the quiet people who don't really want to get involved in it that actually deliver the best results because they're your quiet considered experts who when you can get out there, um, get their thoughts out 
of their head, then you can really start to see that they've got the, the experience to deliver on things. So that's my thoughts for the day is, you know, um, generative AI has its place, it's useful, but it needs that human element. If you want to deliver content at volume, the best way to do it is through video based content. And it's through using ChatGPT to finesse it and create alternative repurposed versions of that. But also that video content can be content for days for your team and where you're, you're making them seem as experts at what they do because they're lending your credibility and adding their own experience and thoughts on top of that. Hope that's useful. This is Javelin Journeys. Um, again, if you want to come and visit us on YouTube, we've got all the videos up on there. We've got Content Classroom where we show you how to do specific things and how we use ChatGPT, the tools that we use. Um, it'd be great to see you on there. Get yourself signed up for the newsletter as well. We'll drop it into your email once a week on a Thursday or a Friday, depending on whether it's LinkedIn or email. And, and we'd love to hear your feedback and thoughts. So, you know, if you've enjoyed any of the content that we're putting out there, if you agree substantially with any of the topics that we're discussing or disagree, um, always open for conversations. And if you've got any ideas for things that you'd like to see us discussing in the future, please do get in touch. Let us know what you think. All right. Enjoy some holidays. Take care.